I start saying that two is better than one. Uh, this is a classical advertise from a supermarket when we want to sell the product. And I think in this case, it fits very well uh, with the combination of high flow and uh, non-invasive ventilation. Uh, I want to just point out that is, it is very difficult for a patient to stand for 24 hours in a row using non-invasive ventilation because of a well-known uh, problem with tolerance. Sometimes patients cannot uh, uh, speak, uh, they cannot uh, drink or eat, for example. And what you usually do, you uh, provide oxygen therapy, the standard one, uh, during NIV interval. Well, if you have a device able to combine the two during the NIV interval, you may still support the patient with a form of a positive pressure. And uh, you need also to remember that these patients are uh, hypercapnic to start, uh, being either COPD or restricted thoracic disorder patient. And uh, uh, when you remove uh, any form of support, uh, there is a chance that you don't have a, a good washout of CO2, while when you apply high flow, uh, it is uh, already known from the literature uh, that using this device, you can obtain a satisfactory uh, washout of CO2 clearing up uh, uh, this gas uh, from your narix and therefore improving alveolar ventilation. Well, uh, there are several uh, options, I think. One is just as I said a while ago, to use high flow in the NIV interval to improve uh, uh, probably the tolerance of the patient being supported. The second one is just to try to reduce uh, with this device the hours of NIV is a sort of, uh, I would call, uh, winning procedure and allowing patients to probably improve also the quality of life because they can, uh, uh, as I said, drink, uh, uh, eat, or even talk a little bit, or even uh, reading the newspaper in a, or watching TV in a more comfortable way. On the other side, with patient with uh, a problem of secretion removal, the combination of uh, NIV and uh, eye flow may improve uh, uh, secretion clearance, uh, improving the ciliary uh, function and eventually uh, reducing the exication of the upper airways. So I think there is a lot of potential in using uh, one uh, machine with two devices in it. Well, you need always to think uh, quality of life of this patient. Quality of life means also get out of your house uh, or do your uh, uh, simple uh, uh, things like uh, cooking or doing gardening, whatever, even when you are inside uh, uh, your home. And uh, uh, you know that uh, you can uh, sometimes switch according to the workload that you need to face during a specific activity, the device. In other words, if you have, for example, to walk uh, on, a, um, on a flat uh, uh, environment, you can uh, use uh, uh, high flow uh, device that is uh, probably easy uh, to use. Uh, and on the other side, if you increase uh, uh, your demand, like when you, you, you climb, for example, uh, um, uh, stairs or you do some hard work, you may need the support uh, of uh, NIV. And uh, this device is portable, as I said before, uh, is very light and therefore is very e easy uh, to use uh, from the uh, 
patient point of view and also uh, very easy also to use uh, outside uh, your house. Indeed, it has been uh, uh, recently shown in a paper uh, by Annalisa Carrucci, a randomized control trial, then both non-invasive mechanical ventilation and high flow nasal cannula, they perform much better than the standard oxygen treatment when you ask the patient to perform a six minute walking distance. Uh, namely, you can improve uh, uh, the distance by 25, 30 meters for this, keeping uh, the same level of oxygen saturation. So I think this device uh, should uh, be, uh, I would say, the first choice uh, uh, to improve quality of life of uh, home mechanically ventilation patients. Yes, they need, uh, uh, as I said before, uh, easy of use uh, from the patient point of view, uh, and easy of use. Uh, they should be quite light uh, to carry over when the patient is out and the minimal monitoring system. Uh, in other words, I think that oxygen saturation is uh, more than enough in this patient to detect, for example, during nighttime, if uh, high flow nasal cannula may be enough uh, to keep uh, oxygen saturation above 90%, or conversely, if you need uh, by, by chance NIV during nighttime, for example, and uh, high flow nasal cannula during daytime. So I think that you don't need very sophisticated monitoring system, provided you have a good uh, uh, index uh, of oxygen saturation.